So a person needs to know that if you're going to ask someone that has Yirat Shamayim, they're going to tell you what is the truth. If you're going to ask somebody that they have Yirat money, their fear of money, fear of popularity, fear of being right all the time, fear of missing out, fear of a lot of other things, but not fear of heaven, then certainly you're asking the wrong place. So never make a transaction when it comes to Torah and mitzvot and staka and things of that nature when it comes to uh, because of money. It has to be because of who you ask and that person has to have Yirat Shemayim. So now a person made this mitzvah of tefillin or perhaps he made a mitzvah buying an etrog. Now you would think, well, I bought an etrog. What's the problem buying an etrog? I can tell you from personal experience. I've lived in, living in Florida for I think now eight, nine years. Eight, nine years I've been living in Florida. I've paid as much as $500 for an etrog. $500 for an etrog. I, Baruch Hashem, whatever Hashem gives me, I designate for mitzvot. When I go buy an etrog or th- different things related to mitzvot, I simply say, give me the best you possibly have, whatever it costs. If I have the money, I'll pay for it. If I don't have the money, then, you know, I have to figure out what to do. Go get the money, work more, I don't know, do something, pray to Hashem for Hashem to, to give me a miracle to get the money. But nonetheless, the price is insignificant. Quality is most, more important to me. So I've had a trogim from different places here in Florida for the last eight years, different people. Eight years, every single year. Baruch Hashem, lately I've been buying multiple etrogim because of this issue. Every year, most of the etrogim that I have are lemons. They're not really etrogim. And one time, last year, not this past year, the year before, one uh, young guy advertised that he's selling the best etrogim in the world, and the planet, and you know, they came from Mars or something, wherever they came, he has etrogim, $500, special class, special this, special that, no problem. Give me. I bought two. Not because I have extra money to waste, simply because in case something happens, you have kids, it falls, it breaks, whatever it is. HaKadosh Baruch provides. Got these two by a miracle. Mamasha miracle. Hashem had mercy on me because this is well, like one of the mitzvot that's like my favorite mitzvah. I love Sukkot. And the etrog is like my favorite thing. I don't know why, since the beginning, it's always been special to me. I remember, I think I told you guys the story years ago when I uh, first started out. I lost everything and I had one, you know, last bit of money left. I think it was like six, seven hundred dollars. And it was Sukkot. I went to buy a trogim for my family and I was going to buy for myself. And I bought a six hundred dollar trog. Pretty much gave all of the money that I had left on this one trog. That is the most beautiful trog in the world. It was miraculous. It lasted for a couple of years. A story of itself. Nonetheless, every year I try to do whatever I can to get the best possible etrog. Mamash, a miracle. That year I didn't know where I was going to get the etrog. This guy popped up. I bought two etrogim from him. A thousand bucks for etrogim. And then of course I bought for, for, for my kids also cheaper ones. And Baruch Hashem, we have etrogim. By a miracle. Last minute, Mamash, the day before the Chag or the day of like the evening, one of my uh, uh, dear students from Canada sends that deals with a togim from morocco sends me an etrog and it actually reaches last minute so of course you have this etrog it's a gift it's, it was beautiful i'm gonna use this one yeah but what about the thousand dollars you just spent on these other two thousand thousand whatever it's gonna let him give him panasa what do i care forever he got panasa fine but having a etrog you know what happened at the end of sukkot at the end of sukkot I opened the etrogim. The $500 etrogim, both of them are lemons. Meaning I could have been going, ah, oh, do, Hashem. I have a lemon. What happened? That's what they sell. So a person can do whatever they want to do. They're going to be tested. They're going to be tested. You're going to be tested. How do you help yourself when all these things can happen, Mesirut Nefesh. Sacrifice everything for the sake of the mitzvah. Show Hashem you love the mitzvah and Hashem will protect you from it. Just like Baruch Hashem, the story that I just told you, if it wasn't for that miraculous etrog that I got last minute, I wouldn't have fulfilled the entire mitzvah for the whole holiday. So this Rabotai is what the Chazonish is telling us here. 
You bought feeling satisfying all the strict requirements. You bought an etrog, satisfying the perfect, looks perfectly kosher. All of a sudden, you discover there's a little black dot. Oh, does it postulate? Does it not postulate? Is it still okay? Is it on the upper uh, 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 section of the etrog? Therefore, it cancels it, or is it really in the middle? It's not a really big deal. Does it take away from the etrog? Do you even know all the laws? Or it's just like, listen, it's an etrog. I bought it for 50 bucks. What's the big deal? If you're one of those people, what's the big deal? Let me just get the cheapest thing you have. Then surely you are clueless at how few mitzvot you actually end up keeping. Because most of the time, if you don't know the law, you're not able to observe the law. Or a person will say, listen, I just bought a tzitzit, nice tzitzit, ordered it from Eretz Yisrael, ordered it from here, ordered it from there. But then all of a sudden it arrives, wait a minute, where did I order it from? I ordered it from some company. Wait, is this even a Jewish company? Oh. I'm in a Jewish company. So how, how could I be sure? Wait, if it's not a Jewish company, who made this tzitzit? So if they made a tzitzit, and it's not a Jewish company, and even though this and even though that, yeah, but you're supposed to have the, the kavanah when you put in the tzitzit, that it's for shamayim, it's the, oh, oh, all of a sudden you have all these doubts. The more you know about the law, the more questions you're going to have. Like some people, they go to all types of places, Judaica stores. They buy whatever. They buy this, they buy that. And then they leave the store. And wait a minute, hold on a second. The guy that owns the store that sold me all these different things, I just saw him driving on Shabbat. Should I just, do I still, what? Eh? Eh? You're going to have a bunch of holy things from a person that driving on Shabbat? So these are the things that happen, says the Chazonish. So what does this all, what does this all have to do with the, uh, with, with the, the Midot? What is this? This is the law. What does it have to do with the character traits? So he says, in such a case, a person now has to wage a war on his bad traits. On his bad traits. Why does he have to wage a war on his bad traits? Sometimes the trait of laziness when he's already overly tired. Sometimes it's connected with being shamed before other people. Sometimes he stands to suffer monetary loss. And sometimes his family members are going to tease him. And so on. There can be thousands of such difficulties. And in general, for a person who is being particular about mitzvah observance, the main challenge is, is in standing alone. And he needs courage not to be swayed by his environment. The Chazoni sums it all up and tells us the following. The tests are coming. In fact, the more knowledgeable you become about Torah, the more you're going to have different tests. And it's only your character development and your perfection of your character traits that's going to help you overcome those tests. Why? Because you spend $1,000 on an etrog. You spend $500 on this. You spend extra amount on that. You bought this from this place, but now you know you have to return it. Are you going to be lazy or cheap and not do it? If you're still lazy, if you're still stingy, if you're still arrogant and know it all, then you're not going to pass the test. You're going to say, ah, no, it's no big deal. And you're going to keep the bad atrog. You're going to keep the bad feeling. You're going to keep this and you're going to keep that. And you're going to keep the sins in your hand and not on the mitzvot. This is the reason why the Chazoni started the section by saying, that this is why fixing the midot is needed in order to keep halacha. And keeping halacha is needed in order to fix the midot. Because if you fixed your midot, when the test comes from observing the halacha, now that you know more, that stronger character trait will allow you to pass the test and observe that halacha despite the test. Despite tiredness, laziness, stinginess, arrogance, and whatever other flawed character trait you had before you fixed it. On the other hand, if it wasn't for that alacha, you wouldn't know that you actually fixed that character trait. Because you can say, wait, I used to be lazy, but I'm not lazy anymore. How do you know? I used to be arrogant, but I'm not arrogant anymore. How do you know? I used to be uh, stingy, I used to be this, but I'm not anymore. How do you know? Oh, well, you don't know until you get tested. And what's the best place to get tested? With the mitzvot themselves. With the mitzvot themselves, Abutai.